Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the very first Thomas Festival in the United States of America. It's a very <laughs> it's a very important day. Very important guests. <laughs> Even my jacket is important. <laughs> uh, well, the the festival began as a dream shared between myself and Brian May more than two decades ago. I grew up in a small country called Armenia, but the people who inspired me as a teenager belonged to the world. I was deeply influenced by science fiction giants like Arthur C. Clarke, Isaac Asimov, Strugatsky Brothers, Stanislav Lem, Clifford Simak, Sheckley. At the same time, music played a huge role in shaping my imagination and worldview. My musical inspirations ranged from classical composers like Edward Grieg and Tchaikovsky, the legends of jazz, soul, rock like Miles Davis, Stevie Wonder, Oscar Peterson, Queen, and Genesis. I used to play in a rock band. And there we are. <clears throat> Tonight, we gather in this extraordinary space, not just as scientists, artists, musicians, students, explorers, but as humans united by something timeless, our curiosity. Stardust celebrates the most powerful force we know, the human brain. A three-pound galaxy of neurons that gave us Beethoven's symphonies and Kubrick's visions, that uncovered the structure of DNA and sent a spacecraft to the age of the interstellar space. It's this brain that learns the laws of the universe and then composes music about it, that builds rockets and writes poetry about the stars. This very building, the Kennedy Center, was dreamed by artists and built by scientists. And tonight we honor both. Among the many things we are proud of at Starmus, one shines especially bright, the Stephen Hawking Medal for Science Communication. Why Stephen Hawking? Stephen Hawking believed in the power of ideas, but also in the power of people. And there is one person he often credited for his path into science, his science teacher, the Grand Tata. Hawking once said, if it weren't for Mr. Tata, I probably wouldn't have gone into science at all. What makes this story even more powerful is why Mr. T who, was, who Mr. Tata was. His parents escaped the horrors of the Armenian genocide in Turkey in 1915 finding safety and hope far from home in Manchester. And from that Armenian family of survivors came a teacher who ignited the spark in a young boy named Stephen Hawking. That spark ignited by a refugee child illuminated the universe. This story is not just about history. It's about how human connection defies geography how one teacher from a family shaped by tragedy helped inspire one of the greatest minds of our time. And it's a reminder that science is not separate from the human story. It is the human story. Stephen believed that science should not stay in labs and lecture halls. He believed it should sink. And so we created a model that honors those who make science not just understood, but unforgettable. And in 2015, when we presented the idea of a model to honor the communication of science, Stephen Hawking not only approved it, he entrusted it to Starmus. Stephen was a member of our advisory board. He joined Starmus on three different occasions. The medal design itself is a powerful symbol. On one side is a portrait of Stephen Hawking, a sketch drawn by Alexei Leonov, the first spacewalker. 
on the reverse, Brian May's Red Special Guitar, alongside Leonov's iconic first spacewalk. So we make a bridge between arts, adventures, and science. The design was a collaboration between Leonov and Brian May, two visionaries who believed that art and science must speak the same language. Stephen Hawking endorsed the design and made his wish clear. The Starmus and the Starmus Advisory Board would become the guardians of the medal, responsible for nominating and selecting the winners. It was his vision that the model should live under the Starmus umbrella, celebrating those who communicate science with, ch with clarity, passion, and brilliance. The first laureates awarded in 2016 and 17 were personally chosen by Stephen Hawking himself. Since its creation, we've awarded it to David Attenborough, Jane Goodall, Hans Zimmer, Christopher Nolan, Elon Musk, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Brian May, Sylvia L, Buzz Aldrin, Laurie Anderson, Brian Eno, and visionaries who have made science something you can see, hear, touch, and feel. Why do we give this medal to filmmakers, writers, and musicians? Because they build bridges from complex equations to the hearts of millions. They remind us that science is not only about knowledge. It's about meaning. It's not just truth, it's a beauty. But we also know the future doesn't just belong to the legends, it belongs to the young. This is why this year we are proud to launch a new chapter of the Hawking Medal, the Junior Medal, for the next generation of science communicators. Because somewhere in this audience or watching online is a teenager editing their first science video, a student writing their first story about cosmos, and they deserve to be seen, to be celebrated, to be told, your voice matters. So why bring Starmus to America? Because the United States has given the world Carl Sagan and Richard Feynman, but also Star Wars and Interstellar. It's a land of moonshots and movie screens where science and storytelling walk side by side. If we want to build future where science leads the way, we need it to live not just in labs, but in culture. And next year, get ready, we celebrate 10 years of the Hawking Medal. It has to be powerful and forgettable and historical because science needs its storytellers and storytellers needs their stage. This stage is Starmus. Welcome to Starmus USA. Let the stars speak. Thank you. Thanks.